Hey everyone, welcome to Facebook Live Wednesday night. And uh, I'm glad if you're here today with us live or if you're watching the replay. Um, I'm Cassie, if you don't know me. And uh, this week I'm gonna be talking all about parent-teacher conferences. Um, so every week I write a blog post and then in my weekly chat, I talk about that blog post and share a little bit with you. So this week's blog was kind of inspired by one of my very best friends uh, since we were little bitty kids in middle school. Um, she has a son who just started kindergarten and she kept texting me about the parent teacher conference and about how she wanted it to be awesome and the teachers to like her and all of that. And so um, coming from the parent side, it's totally different than the teacher side. And so it's important to remember that the parents and the teachers, they both want the best for the kid. And then the parent-teacher conference is that time when they can collaborate and work together and kind of meet the needs of the kid and learn all about them. So I'm gonna show you and kind of walk you through the blog post and let you know kind of, let's see, sorry, I'm getting rid of this. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so um, the blog post is set up kind of like a timeline to help you get started. So when you know your uh, conference is gonna be a few weeks out, you can start getting prepared for it so it doesn't sneak up on you and it doesn't um, catch you by surprise and get you all stressed out. So um, it starts with three weeks before the actual conference. Hi, Carrie. So my best friend who inspired this is actually on here. So you can give her a shout out. Uh, okay, so three weeks before, oh, hi Mary Pat, good to see you. Um, three weeks before there is um, a little sheet that you can just send home and it tells that the, the parents that the conferences are coming up and they'll want to go and sign up for a spot online. So I didn't always do it that way, but it was so much back and forth communication trying to get all of the families into a spot that it was a nightmare. When I started doing it online through, um, you can use Google um, Google Docs or Google Forms, or um, you can even use a program like Sign Up Genius uh, to get you started. So, um, so three weeks out, go ahead and get all of the parents trying to sign up and getting a time slot ready. Okay, that's pretty much all you have to do at that point. Just get it going. Um, a couple of weeks before, there are still going to be those parents that haven't signed up yet. So at that point, you can just send them a little reminder that the parent-teacher conference is coming up, they haven't signed up yet, and um, they need to do that. Now, there will be some of the parents who still don't sign up, so you may have to make some phone calls or some specific emails to those parents but um, overall it will work itself out and you won't have to spend a lot of time getting your planner out and signing up people uh, carrie said she loves sign up genius yes if you use sign up genius leave it in the comment whether you're watching this live or whether it's a rebroadcast if you use sign up genius for your conferences this year let people know how it, how it went um, i made a sign up genius the other day it was pretty easy okay so two weeks, that's two weeks. Now, one week before, it's really time to start thinking about what's gonna happen in your conference. So one of the things, the very first note that you sent home that kind of informed the parents about it, there's a place on this form where the parents are gonna write their concerns, what they want to talk to you about at the conference. And so you're gonna have that if they sent one back. And um, you're gonna have your own concerns for the parents that you're thinking about. And it's time to start really honing in on those and per finding evidence or finding work samples that can back up what you have to say. Um, so at that point too, you can do some other th fun things with your students. So chances are your ch the child is not going to be in the conference. Hi, Jamie. Um, the, it's, they're not gonna be in the conference with you. So um, you're, 
you know, you're going to want their voice heard too because the conference is all about them. They're the important one. So here is a little um, reflection sheet that the kids can fill out. And it just says like, sometimes I struggle with, I'd love for my teacher to help me with, I'd like my parents to help me. And then some kind of like just work, um, self-reflections about their work and all of that. So that's something you can do about a week um, before the actual conference. So that becomes part of the sample the work sample that you have um, to show the parents. Okay, so the parents' concern spot. Yes, that is so true. So I've, you know, kind of learned that the hard way by being blindsided at conferences when a parent comes and then they have this big concern and I never saw that concern or didn't think about it and they ask me these questions about that concern and I feel like I feel a little embarrassed because I can't answer their question because I didn't see it and I didn't know to look for it. So, um, okay, so in the, the days before, you are gonna wanna take the parent concerns, your concerns, find work samples um, that can kind of provide the evidence to show parents. There's also on the blog, there's a, a page that you can print out and it has some places for you to take notes about each student. You can fold it in half and it becomes a little folder where you can just store all of the papers that you're gonna have or what you're gonna give to the parents. It has a you know a few places for grades or work habits and things like that. Um, there's also a little bracelet that you can cut out and um, just tape on to the student's wrist the day before, just as one last reminder. Um, and there's one other fun thing in the free resources, and this is just a little note that the kids can write like the day before the conference. It says, I'm excited for you to meet my teacher because, and then you can give this little note to the parents at the conference too. So finally, you know, you've gotten prepared, you're ready. All of this is really talked more detail on the blog. So you can definitely go to my blog, cassienowak.com and read all about the timeline and kind of how to get you going from point A to point B. And on the final day, uh, there are a couple more resources. One just kind of lets parents know what to do while they wait. Or if you're like Carrie and you get to your conference three hours early, <laughs> what to do in that case. Um, and then there is another little handout that you can give them that's about parent-teacher relationship. Because the biggest thing about the parent-teacher conference is that the parents want to know that you love their child and that you are working hard every day to support them and you and you care about them, not only as a student, but as, um, as a child too. Um, so on the blog, I'm, there's nothing really to show you, but there are some great tips on how to actually interact with the parents and how to make the best of the conference that you can. So there's some, um, some tips about how you talk to them, how you describe the child, how you treat the parents, what to do if a parent is crying or if a parent is super mad at you or is screaming and yelling at you or any of those things that have definitely happened to me during conferences before. So all of that is discussed in, on the blog so you can read about it and get a little bit more insight into um, and to, you know, how to make the best of it. So if you're watching this and you've already had your conference, maybe you could leave a little GIF or emoji to show how it went. That would be fun to see and to share. And um, if you have any questions or anything, you can um, leave a question. There's not many people here live, but if you're watching this as a re broadcast, you can still leave a question and I would be um, more than happy <laughs> crying. Yes, right Mary Pat. <laughs> yes, if you've been teaching for any length of time, you have definitely had parents crying. Um, and that sometimes is out of frustration. I've had parents cry from pride before too, because the things that I were able to share with the mom um, really just made her that happy that she cried tears of joy but mostly it's <laughs> tears of frustration or um anger maybe even so yeah well anyway that's it that's all i wanted to say all of the things that i showed you are free right on the the blog how many pieces of student work do you suggest 
Uh, that is such a good question. So I never really had um, like a set amount of work. I didn't even have work for every student. I What I did is I usually had their grades. Um, I would print out a progress report so I could have their grades in front of me. And I really only collected a lot of work samples if the parents had a concern or if I had a concern too. And so in that case, instead of like a certain number of them, I would just make sure that I had something that would show the need or the concern. Thanks, Mary Pat. But you were amazing in the bracelet reminder ideas. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> well, you can, you, you're a teacher. What are you talking about? You are a teacher. How much time do you usually allow for each conference? Um, well, that depends on the district. Usually it's quick, like 15 minute time slots so that you can get them in and out. Now, sometimes uh, people don't show up for their time slots, so you can kind of like, you know, kind of go over a little bit, but usually it's gotta be quick. So that's, that's why preparing is great, so that you know what you're gonna say and you have time at the beginning to really love on the parents before you just start giving them the hard news. Um, so, that's not enough time to discuss my angel. <laughs> that is enough time to discuss the angels. When it, when it becomes difficult is when you're trying to discuss the not so angelic students. Um, how do you get the last conference of the day to leave on time? Well, if you're lucky like me, you have great administrators who come on the PA and say that, um, that the school is getting locked down in five minutes, please make your way to the exit. But if, if you're not that lucky, you do just have to kind of stop the conversation as kindly and as professionally as you can and just say that there are other students. But if you still um, need to speak more, we, we could continue this over the phone or something like that. But yeah, there are definitely those parents that, it always tends to be the parents with the really good kids, the ones that are, you know, straight A's and love school and teacher's pet type. They like to hear how awesome their kid is and that can kind of uh, cause a conference to go a little bit over too. Hi! This is awesome. So, <clears throat> boundaries, even for teachers, they are necessary. Yes, boundaries. On my blog, I talk about um, how you have to draw a boundary sometimes because some parents are mean. Like, there's no other way to say it. They, they can be mean to you because they don't understand and there's a disconnect in your relationship in some kind of way. So, they don't see that you have their best, the, their kid's best interest in, at heart. And so... Um, they, they can, I don't know, there's no other way to say it other than mean. If a parent gets like that, the, you do not have to take it. You don't have to be yelled at or belittled or talked down to or any of that. If that starts happening, you just say, I'm sorry, we need an administrator in this and this meeting's over. And we've had that happen before too. And that's the kind where you as the teacher leave the conference crying, not the parent. But um, but you don't have to allow anyone, like, like my awesome hubby said, boundaries. The teachers really want to talk to parents during their office hours. That's a, that, I love that question coming from a parent. Um, teachers don't necessarily want to talk to parents during their office hours because they are usually doing a million things during their office hours like uh, going to PLC meetings or um, making copies or dealing with absent kids, re like giving retests and things like that. So it kind of is hard to talk during, during office hours. I think most teachers would rather talk like right after school. Do you wanna call? Do you wanna call your teacher every day during office hours, Carrie? <laughs> so. Anyways, well, I guess that is it. If you have any questions, just um, let me know. I love, I, I, I love um, coming on and doing live and talking to people about 
education and about teaching. Um, it can be a little nerve wracking, but y'all made it easy for me. So thank you <laughs> every day. <laughs> All right, guys, y'all have a great night and I'll see you next week at eight o'clock. Bye. Let's see, finish. <laughs>